Hello everyone and welcome to Morning Coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a reading for Monday, December 24th, 2018. It is Christmas Eve. So to those of you who are celebrating Christmas, a very Merry Christmas to you. Uh, this is going to be a general energy reading for the day. So this is not specific to anything in particular. This is just what Spirit would like to discuss today. Also, uh, this is a general reading. So please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Yes? So, without further ado, let's get into it, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, Monday, December 24th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. So... It's kind. It's rainy today here in uh, New York, in Brooklyn. Um, I noticed it. I got up this morning and I, you know, I opened my blinds and it's still kind of dark. But I did look. I caught, happened to see by one of the street lamps, and it was raining. And I was like, "Oh, it's not cold enough to snow." <laughs> that's un. It's, well, it's not unfortunate, but. You know how there's that whole thing of like a white Christmas and all that stuff, but like whatever. I mean, it was 60 degrees on the first day of winter, on uh, the 21st, the winter solstice, the day of the solstice. It was 60 degrees. At least it was here in Brooklyn. It's like in, in New York. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, I, <laughs> I'm totally, totally like getting sidetracked here. Monday, December 24th, 2018. I'm going to give one more shuffle. And then we'll see what we've got for today. All right, here we go. Okay, well, no, one more shuffle. <laughs> one more shuffle. Okay. All right, now we got it. Here we go, guys. Monday, December 24th. Ooh, ooh, King of Swords in reverse. So far, Eight of Swords. Okay, it looks like we've got it so far. We've only got two cards here. So we've got the King of Swords in reverse. And we've got the Eight of Swords here. Ah, but underneath the deck is the Sun. Okay. Well, this is good so far. Uh, I'm going to do one more pull, but I'm going to leave the Sun here. And I'm going to pull one more. Let's see what else we get for today. December 24th, 2018. Three of Wands. Okay. That's okay. There we go. All right. And underneath the deck is the seven of cups. All right. So there's a lot of illusion, probably a lot of confusion around. Um, okay. All right. So here we go. We've got the King of Swords in reverse. The first two cards that came out were the King of Swords in reverse and the Eight of Swords. Okay. So there is an energy of over-criticism. Um, and this is, I really feel like this is probably the ego kind of getting in the way here a little bit, which is so funny because I woke up, when I woke up this morning, I had Beyonce's ego playing in my head. <laughs> Um, and I mean, it was relevant to me because of some like fears or whatever that are coming up, but, um, and it's definitely, definitely has to do with the seven of cups here. So the seven of cups is, um, illusions, possibilities, options. Um, 
it could be fear. It could be fear. Uh, but the seven of cups is, is up right here. So it's just like, um, just a, but it, there could be just a lot of, a, a lot of different things running through your head about the situation, um, whatever you're dealing with. But with the eight of swords here, there's a feeling of being trapped. Um, it's almost as if, especially with the king of swords here in reverse, it's like you're running yourself into a trap. You're in, you're, you're, you're trapping yourself in, in the confines of your own mind. Um, and you're needing to step out of that because you have the sun here. Okay. And I almost, this, the sun was underneath the deck after the first pull. And I almost didn't look at it because I wanted to pull again. Um, and I knew I was going to lose the card underneath the deck. It was going to change, but I was strongly, strongly guided to look at it. And of course it was this card. Okay. So everything is going to just be just fine. I really feel like there's a lot of ego and fear getting in the way here. Um, and then you have the hermit and the three of wands. The hermit is in reverse. And that is the, that is the three. Yes, that is the three of wands. Um, and so here to me, what this is saying is for some of you or for some of us, whatever is going on today, or at least with the message that's coming through today, um, for some of you, it's almost as if you're forgetting your inner light. You're forgetting what you've learned about yourself over this amount of time. Also, I mean, and, and that's connected to this energy of the, the King of Swords and like this, the King of Swords in reverse and this ego situation that's kind of, I feel like for some, the ego might be running a little bit amok here. <clears throat> but with the Hermit in reverse, in connection or conjunction with you know that egoic energy with the king of swords in reverse it's as if you're forgetting yourself you're forgetting what you've learned you're forgetting how you have grown expanded and changed over the course of you know i don't know the past year most likely more maybe less who knows whatever whatever resonates with you however long you've been you know doing your thing finding yourself um cultivating your own light but also with the Hermit, especially with the Three of Wands here, the Hermit in Reverse is speaking to a time of coming out of hiding, coming out of waiting, um, exiting Hermit mode for some. Uh, and that could definitely be coming up soon. And actually what I'm picking up here is this could be why your ego may be flaring up a little bit because you're leaving you're starting to come out of the confine the confines of your own mind your own space your own self um and you know opening yourself back up to the world in one way or another um and so that is cause it might that may be causing your ego to flare a little you know what i mean because y y you're not in the safety of your own space any longer you know you're re-emerging you're entering back into the world um now there's a lot of there's a lot of change that's been happening for a lot of us you know many of us are starting our own businesses our own journeys we're going in a new path we're going in a new direction um and with the three of wands here it's like you're waiting. This is the energy of, um, what is it? Waiting for your ships to come in. Excuse me. Uh, invest, investing, um, having made a decision and now putting forth the work and the effort to bring that to fruition. Uh, 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 waiting for a return on an, an investment also. So it's as if you're emerging now with the, with, with the hermit in reverse, you're emerging now, and then you are continuing to do the work that you need to do to keep the momentum going. Okay. While also waiting for that return on the investment here, uh, with the seven of cups, there's a lot of what I'm seeing with the Seven of Cups are some pitfalls. And those pitfalls would be, in essence, your own thoughts. 
fears, illusions. There's really an energy of needing to stay focused right now. Stay focused on the task at hand. Stay focused on what it is you need to do to stay afloat, to, to you know, stay solvent. Um, there could be a lot of illusion around you right now. Which could be, uh, which really is, I feel like, is very much connected to the fear, the ego, that what, what the ego is like picking up on. It's like, the, it, with the King of Swords in reverse, it's almost as if your ego is looking at every little thing that could go wrong and magnifying it way out of proportion. Okay, and you're needing to bring that back into balance. You're really needing to turn the King of Swords energy upright and see things clearly for what they are. Um, know, recognize what you have gone through in the past and how you are, how you've expanded, how you've grown, how you've changed, how far you've come so far. And cut yourself out of this mental prison here with the Eight of Swords. Okay, this is self-imposed. You don't have to be in this space. You can cut yourself out of it. Ultimately, everything is going to be okay with the sun, all right? Things, and, and it may be, yes, it may absolutely be a toss-up right now. A lot, there, you know, a, there, there may be um, a lot of different things going on. There may be a lot of different options. You may not really be sure of which one, which option is going to work out for you, which work, which option is gonna work out for the best. And, and I just feel like for those of you that are resonating with this message, you've already made your decision. You're already moving down your path, the path that you're supposed to be on. Um, and it just it's just that there there are many different ways that things could work out. and all you have to do is just stay solid, stay grounded, um, you know, stay mentally balanced in order to see the opportunities when they come forward. Does that make sense? Like, don't get all clouded or confused and then end up missing something when it presents itself to you. Now, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm not trying to make anyone paranoid that they're going to miss an opportunity. That's not that's not the question here because it's I'm, and I'm getting all, most of this from the seven of cups here what's happening is the universe is working things out for you in a sense I mean it not everything for you because obviously you still have to do your own part of you know you still have to do your part right but the universe has things under control and can see a much wider view than you can, which is not a bad thing. It's just that we're quite focused <laughs> here in these physical bodies, all right? So, and the universe is way more expansive. But again, we have the sun. Everything is going to be fine. Everything, actually everything is working out for the best. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I hope that wasn't too loud. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, all right, so let's get some clarification now. We're gonna start with the King of Swords in reverse. And I guess you, I guess you could say that's a sneeze on the truth, right? <laughs> all right. Let's get some clarification. You know, there's a lot of illusion, especially, especially with, <laughs> wow, I'm really, I'm just getting this right now. Especially with, you know, it is Christmas Eve. Um, uh, people are spending a lot of time with family and friends and whatnot, and that can be pretty tumultuous. And you could be dealing, you could be picking up on the projections of others with the Seven of Cups here, and even the King of Swords in reverse. Um, 
especially if you were going on it walking down a new path that many would deem somewhat irresponsible or foolish or just downright stupid whatever i mean that's their opinion ultimately you know exactly what you're meant to be doing and you are following your own guidance so that's really all that matters but that's where that's where mentally you can get all twisted up um you could be stuck in illusion you could be stuck in a mental prison okay so this really could just be mostly a project picking up on projections from others because i because it's so funny the king of swords has been coming out upright for the longest time and normally this would be masculine energies it could it, I, well it is a masculine energy whether it's man or a woman and um, it makes sense that actually it is masculine energies that are expressing themselves here in a reversed manner um, even if you do identify as more on the feminine side many of us especially those of us that are those of you that are connecting with me on this channel here are of a feminine disposition but you've been balancing and integrating your own masculine energies which has been helping you move forward in your life and take steps to do things or um, create circumstances in which that or create circumstances that are in much greater alignment with who you truly are in that action taking would be of masculine energy but now in today's energies or the message for today whenever this resonates with you this doesn't have to be happening right now but whenever this resonates for you um, the masculine energies within you are starting to get a little twisted are starting to get reversed um, because they're unclear as to how things are actually going to work out but again you've got the sun everything's going to be just fine all right okay so let's get some clarification here i'm going to shuffle one more time and then we're going to get to the king of swords in reverse first okay all right here we go let me move my tea all righty king of swords in reverse please clarify spirit Ooh. whoa 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 okay wow <laughs> That's a whole lot, Spirit. All right, we have judgment here. So you're answering a higher calling, all right? Good God. This may just be clarification for the whole thing. Ooh, chow, look at this. Look at this. Okay. Oh. <sighs> This is a lot, you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start here. All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and take this, even though I was just clarifying the King of Swords, I'm gonna take this as clarifying the whole situation because this is way too many cards to be coming out for just one card. like. So I'm just going to clarify the whole situation here with all of these cards. We're starting off with the Ten of Pentacles. Uh, okay, so the Ten of Pentacles, the first thing the Ten of Pentacles is saying to me is longevity. All right, you're in this for the long haul, and there are going to be moments of ups and downs. Um, so you just got to be able to deal with that. Now you have the Page of Cups here. The Page of Cups is the dreamer. You're following your dreams, all right? This is absolutely the path that you're supposed to be on and it's going to take some time to come into fruition but the universe has got your back four of cups here now so there's some questioning happening have i made the right decision am i going in the right direction and with the queen of pentacles here it's saying to me that you are actually going in the right direction you're quite abundant and you're very much in balance in union with the self here with the three of cups okay um this is all really good 
mind, body, and spirit are very much in alignment here. And with the Queen of Pentacles, this most this could be you, but this could also be looked at as the energies surrounding you. The energies surrounding you being of abundance and fertility, um, nurturance. Strong, uh, strong lessons too. Don't get me wrong. Like this is a strong lesson, but the Queen of Pentacles, the Earth Mother is here to help you get through this. And then with the Four of Cups, I was, I'm sorry, I got... I got sidetracked a little bit because I was picking up more from the Four of Cups and the Page of Cups. You're very much focused on your own cup, your own self, your own lo longevity here. Ten of Pentacles, right? So, um, especially with the Four of Cups, and I don't know if you can hear it, but Archangel Michael is around. Sounds like he's coming down the block. No, they turned. Okay. Anyway... <laughs> But I mean, that energy is here to help you cut out all the frivolous stuff, all the things that actually are not serving you. Um, and what you have here with the Page of Cups and the Four of Cups, especially in the Four of Cups, this person in this deck is more focused on that Ace than the Three Cups behind. The Three Cups behind are empty. What is being invested in is this one cup, your cup of self-love, your Ace of Cups, right? So that's good. Now... Getting down to the second row here. <clears throat> and um, I really feel like this is definitely... I'm going to pull one more. I'm going to do one more pull because I just want to get a closing message, I feel like. But we've got the star. And, and, and this is, I'm taking this as clarification for the Hermit in reverse and the Three of Wands upright. We've got the Star. We've got the Tower. We've got the Unknown in reverse. We have <laughs> Justice. We've got Strength. We've got the Four of Swords. And we've got the Hanged Man in reverse, okay? So, first and foremost, I do want to point out that the Hanged Man and the Four of Swords are very much similar energies here. Um, they're about rest, retreat, uh, meditation, seeing something differently, getting a new point of view, uh, healing, recuperation, some sort of enlightenment, prayer, potentially. I do like to say I, I, I see the Four of Swords as the minor arcana version of the Hanged Man. Now, the Hanged Man is in reverse here. So we're coming out of some sort of suspend, suspended energy, but we're not quite out of it yet with the Four of Swords, okay? There's going, there, I'm picking up that there is an energy of things are going to get, get moving again pretty soon. We have to get out of the holiday season and we have to get into this new year. That's really all that matters. And that is absolutely where that fear is coming into play with the King of Swords in reverse over here. Um, there's still a little bit of a pause. Even though you may feel like you're ready to go with the Hanged Man in reverse, there's still a little bit of a universal energetic pause here, all right? Strength and justice. Everything is going to work out just fine, all right? Um... But actually, I want to go to the star. I want to go to this first. The star and the tower. So you very much created a tower moment. And look here, guys, look. The, in, this, in this section right here, the only minor arcana is the four of swords. Everything else is major. So the tower moment. You have been the tower moment. You... You have gone through a tower moment. You're healing through it right now. But anything that has been removed from your life with this tower moment is, has, has been removed so that your dreams can be brought into play instead with the star. It may have been abrupt. 
Yes. I like, like for me, for example, um, my situation was fairly abrupt. Now I had a plan in place, but, and it's funny, I don't know if you guys watch Olivia Love of Love Always, um, she, uh, she's a YouTuber as well, and she was, she just had this discussion where she was talking about how, you know, she decided that she was gonna start working for herself, and so she had a plan in place, and she was following through with the plan, and God said, nope, you're doing this now. The same thing happened to me. I decided, I, I mean, I needed, I needed to free up time in my schedule anyway, but I decided that I was going to do this full time. And I put a plan in place. I was working through it. And then God said, nope, you're doing this now. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, so, and the same thing happened with a really good, another really good friend of mine. You know, she had a plan in place and she ended it, it ended up like and things ended up happening early for her and it's just like well when the universe says it's time, look when the universe says it's time to go the universe says it's time to go the tower all right but this is all serving healing here do not forget your light with the hermit in reverse now we are coming out of a hermit stage you know we're we're starting to emerge out of the shell but don't forget your light. Now, the unknown card, which is in reverse here. Oh, well, actually, yeah, they're saying do the unknown card first. The unknown in reverse, I'm not quite... I want to see if there's something in the, this little book here, because this is a um, specific card to this deck. Hmm. Okay. Um so oh, sorry guys. So the unknown card. It speaks about needing to keep an open mind. But it also speaks about things that are going that that um you know, are hidden, are needing, are, are going to be revealed soon. But what I'm getting intuitively, what I'm getting with this card is we're getting lost in the unknown. We're getting lost in the fears of the unknown. Okay. Um, and you're needing to just have more faith and trust in the universe because the universe does in fact have your back. And that's where, okay, see this exactly, that makes sense. And that's where we come into strength and justice. Um, strength is keeping your ego, your pride in check. It's keeping the be the inner beast in check, um, in alignment, um, maintaining your belief in yourself. Justice is saying that justice is being served, is going to be served in your life as long as you continue to follow the call of your higher self here with judgment. This is a time of rebirth, of, of, of um, reconciliation, yes, potentially for some, but um, resurrection. Very much a phoenix from the ashes risen type of energy. Um, being reborn, being... Uh, emerging a new person, you know, new circumstances, that kind of thing. All right, I do want to do one. I want to do one more clarifying pull. <laughs> Closing message from the tarot here for this reading, please, spirit. King of Wands. Okay. Wow. Wow. All right. Look at that. So judgment came out again. <laughs> judgment came out again with the king of pentacles and the king of wands. The three of pentacles fell out in reverse on the seven of cups. And then underneath the deck is the seven of cups again. All right. So the three of pentacles to me um, speaks to entrepreneurship but it also speaks towards, that's so crazy, guys. Look, the Seven of Cups is underneath the deck on both sides, in both decks here. With the Three of, uh, the three of Pentacles in reverse um, on top of that. So what's happening here, 
I'm getting two things, but they're both related to self-mastery, which is the other definition of the Three of Pentacles that often comes out for me, uh, in my opinion. Um, first, first meaning that's coming through right now is the fact that you're in the process of rebuilding yourself. So there's going to be some illusion. All right, there are going to be some possibilities. There might, there are going to be some fears, Spirit is saying. As you build up. And, and this is for many of us that are going into business with ourselves here. Entrepreneurialship. The other meaning is with the Seven of Cups, both two instances of the Seven of Cups here and the Three of Pentacles in reverse. You're forgetting your ground. You're forgetting your foundation that you have already been been working on for some time. You're getting lost in the illusion. You're getting lost in the what ifs, in the worst case scenarios even. Even though we don't have the Nine of Swords here, we might as well because we have the King of Swords in reverse with the Eight of Swords upright. Okay, that came out originally. Now, final closing message from Spirit for this reading. King of Pentacles, Justice, King of Wands, all right? First and foremost, the King, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, not Justice, Judgment, Judgment, <laughs> not Justice. Justice is down here, but Judgment, okay? Um, first of all, with the King of Pentacles, regardless of what you may, how you might may think of it so far, or how you may see it right now, you are very well manifested. Okay, or and or you're in the process of becoming very well manifested. King of Pentacles and then the King of Wands. The first thing that I saw or heard or felt when the King of Wands came out was leadership. Okay, trailblazer. And with, with judgment, it's as if you're being reborn or reshaped into this type of person. This stable, balanced, well-manifested, abundant. I mean, look, we have the counterparts here, King and Queen of Pentacles, guys. I really, I just realized that. King and Queen of Pentacles. All right. Now the Queen of Pentacles came out while we were trying to clarify the King of Swords, and then everything just kind of flew all over the place. But now, in the closing message here, you have this. You this is you. Well, let's let me say because this is also you too. This is you, King and Queen of Pentacles, right there. And I've been saying that many of us that have been on this journey, that have been, um, especially those of us that are connecting on this channel here on Divine Conversations. We've been working on balancing our masculine and feminine energies. So it was the feminine energy that led you towards making this big change, right? It was the feminine within you. And then as you balanced the masculine within, you took the steps towards the longevity, 10 of pentacles. I mean, do, I, I'm, I don't know how, how else to say it. I hope I'm getting the, the message across to whoever, to whomever needs to hear it, but you're being reborn. And I, I'm looking at judgment here and I just heard death. Okay, there's definitely, a, you've gone through the death. The transformation is happening. Like this is, even though, you know, death is card number 13. Judgment is card number 22. Judgment is another card of rebirth, just like death is, right? Resurrection. Phoenix, and, but this to me is more of a phoenix card. Phoenix from the Ashes Risen is what I hear most of the time when I ha when I look at this card. And you're being reborn as this fiery, bright, shining star. King of Wands. King of Wands is a trailblazer, is a leader, is a fighter, is passionate, knows exactly what he wants, knows exactly what he's here for, and goes after it without fear of the unknown without fear of what others might say. Look at that lion on there. 
Now you do with the King of Wands, you do even with the King of Pentacles. Well, they all have, they both have their, their, their pitfalls, their dangers. With the King of Wands, you have to work to really keep that ego in check. Strength. With the King of Pentacles, you have to work to not be too materialistic, not be so focused on your pentacles. And that could be part of the fear right now. You know, you are already in this King of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles state, this materially abundant state, right? But then because things don't quite look the way you think they should, here comes the King of Swords in reverse, running amok. This would definitely would be the ego. Okay. But ultimately, this is great. <laughs> this is really good. All right, guys. Mm. Mm. By the way, look at here. There's a lot of Leo energy. I mean, all of the Leo cards have come out. You have the sun. You have strength. And you've got the King of Wands. So some of you may have strong Leo placement in your chart. But that absolutely it doesn't have to be that way. But that absolutely goes, falls in line with this leadership energy that I'm picking up on. It's excellent. That is excellent. All right. Oracle guidance today. We're going to start with the animal spirit guides. And then we're going to go to the crystal mandala deck. But I'm also being called. I'm also being called to get some oracle guidance from the whispers of love. And I think that's mainly because we're needing to love ourselves. If you're in this egoic state and you're fearful of the future. Um, we need some guidance towards showing ourselves some self-love. Yes? Yes. So, animal spirit guides first. Then we'll do the whispers of love, and then we'll close with the crystal mandala. All right. One more shuffle. Monday, December 24th. Thank you so much, spirit. Best message, please. Starfish, but starfish is in reverse and ah, yeah. And then underneath the deck is gazelle. We're gonna start with gazelle. Gazelle. Heightened aware. <laughs> Underneath Gazelle is Otter. And Otter came out last night, or not last night, but yesterday afternoon during the Twin Flame weekly reading. And Otter, Otter is all about having fun, maintaining a playful like energy. And honestly, if this is, if you're in this kind of fight or flight, doom or gloom, doom and gloom type energy right now, Otter is exactly what you need to keep the spirits high, maintain your vibration. I was talking about that yesterday in the twin flame, twin flame reading, maintain your vibration because everything is going to be just fine. I want a unicorn for you. Yay, unicorn for you. <laughs> I'm being silly. Anyway, um, so yes, maintain that vibration guys, but here we go. Gazelle, heightened awareness and ability, vulnerable. The gazelle represents supreme grace. With every move, this awe-inspiring beauty emits sophistication and elegance. Gazelle personalities are often hyper-aware of their surroundings, bordering on hyper-vigilant, and this can inhibit them from enjoying the beauty they've spent so much effort cultivating. I mean, that is absolutely perfect. It goes falls right in line with the King of Swords in, in reverse energy, okay? No more worrying about all those predators out there in the world. When this card appears, it's time to get back to the present moment. Sit down, find your breath, and acknowledge the bounty that surrounds you. Let it nourish your gentle spirit. 
When in balance, gazelle is graceful, perceptive, and artistic. When out of balance, a gazelle suffers from food allergies, insomnia, and a racing mind. To bring into balance, one can practice yin yoga, can spend some time in a cozy home, or just enjoy some good food. Yes? Yes. <laughs> okay. This wants to stay out on the table um, because otter wants to be shown. And I guess I, I'll go ahead and read it. Otter. Here, let me hold this up. Otter. Unobstructed joy, playfulness, contentment. Perhaps the most joyful creature within the animal spirit deck, the otter represents absolute bliss. Otter energy is the playfulness of a child available to us at any age. They have a giddiness, a reverence for life itself without the presence of doubt, worry, or skepticism. Imagine yourself with a little more otter energy. What would life look like? What would it take to bring you there? The otter card begs these questions and wants to transport us to that precious place as soon as possible. The celebration awaits. When in balance, otter is full of love and needs nothing. When out of balance, otter is gloomy, sighs, and makes silly excuses. To bring into balance, one must have a dance party or a celebration. Yes, yes, honey, okay. And then finally, we have starfish in reverse. I actually like seeing starfish in reverse. Starfish isn't the most, I don't know. Well, you decide. I'm gonna hold it upright so you can see. Starfish, beautiful, alluring, superficial, or shallow. See? Ugh. The starfish is a natural and exquisite beauty, mesmerizing to all. Be around, being around someone with starfish energy is a thrill, like you've been put under a spell of divinity itself. The problem is these creatures have been reliant on how they look and what other people think of them for so long that they may have forgotten their deeper callings. When this card appears, it's important to ask, am I being swayed by outward appearances? What dreams have I put aside to please others? When in balance, starfish is uplifting, artistic, and expressive. When out of balance, starfish gossips and feels empty. To bring into balance, one must spend time with some positive friends. And I do like seeing starfish in reverse here because it's, it's speaking to an opportunity to let that stuff go. All of the public opinion, all of the ways people are, that you, people are seeing you or the way you think people are seeing you. You have a chance to let all that go. Um, and this, so this, starfish is coming out in reverse right now in this circumstance and it's upright, but I'm gonna, okay. So this is how it fell. Um, it's coming out in this way because this is the time to release all of that expectation. Do what is right for you, okay? Express yourself in the way that you seem or that you deem the best. All right, so. Next, we're gonna get some Oracle guidance from the Whispers of Love, and then I'm gonna close the reading with one card from the Crystal Mandala deck. Alrighty, guys. Here we go. Best messages, please, spirit. Mm. Okay. Underneath the deck is awe. I love you. Card number 20. These are very important words. And this is energies that you've been expending towards yourself recently. You know, loving yourself enough to know that it's okay to do what it is you truly desire to do. Card number 47, physical touch is important. For some of us, nothing is more important than a tender touch. This might include a pat on the back or giving a hug to someone who needs it. I say give yourself a hug. Give yourself a pat on the back. You really accomplished a lot so far, okay? Oh my God. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Look at what's underneath Otter. Unicorn! <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. So I'm gonna actually 
I'm gonna do that because I because I love unicorns. Okay. <laughs> Um, card number 46, spend some quality time together. It's imperative that we spend quality time with those we are in significant relationships relationships with, listening and talking to each other. Um, and it's so crazy. And then card number 44 here, get to know each other. Learning to meet another's need for love is important for a relationship to grow. This is all talking about the relationship with yourself. And you've had this time. You know, you've been in a restful period, but now it's time to really get the ball rolling with your own quality time, with knowing yourself. Okay? You don't have to just be with family at this time. You can spend some time with yourself. And I'm looking at unicorn here and I'm thinking longevity because of the unicorn's horn. It's like you're seeing, you're using it. The unicorn is connected to the third eye. And um, I'm what I'm seeing with this card is you're seeing off into the future. You're seeing into the distance. You're preparing for what's to come. And that could be a major shift. And it could be that your your perception is opening, like your extrasensory perception, maybe even your third eye is opening, you're channeling more. Definitely. It's a very good sign. Okay. Closing message here from the from the uh, Crystal Mandala deck. One final closing message. Please, Spirit, for today, Monday, December 24th. There we go. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Card number 41, Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite. Daring Rebirth. Look at that. All right, let's read this. Here we go. Daring Rebirth. We bring you the empowerment of Daring Rebirth. The bold spirit in, your, in you claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. What was I saying? Phoenix from the ashes risen. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph in a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or your own mind. There is so much possible for you, a radically different and new you to become. Believe and so shall it be. That couldn't be any more perfect, you guys. Couldn't be any more perfect. It takes daring to imagine a new life, boldness of spirit and willingness to, oh, um, sorry, and willingness, I'm sorry, let me try that again. Boldness of spirit and willingness are needed to allow yourself to embrace and live that different life. You can be in this world as you choose to be. The truth of you can have many different versions, some fearful, some free. There is so much that is possible for you to experience in this life. You have the light and power of a living sun inside of you. Rebirth is new life, a different life, a different you that is truthful, authentic, and yet more vibrant, radiant, vivid, and free. It is possible for you to have all this. The requirement for rebirth, however, is an experience of shamanic death. This is not physical death. It is a spiritual transformation. It requires that whatever is keeping you from living a happier, freer, more beautiful, joyful, and soul-satisfying life be sacrificed, be allowed to die, so to speak, so you can be born anew. To the extent you have believed yourself to be those things, felt attached to them, or that your identity was wrapped up in them, you will feel like you are dying along with them. You are changed through this process. You will not feel, think, behave, or believe as you did prior to it. Shamanic death creates the process. It strips you of what you have believed yourself to be, and what is left is the real you, unencumbered, unveiled, and true. 
The need for daring is because shamanic death and rebirth can frighten the mind. King of Swords in reverse. Let me read that again. The need for daring is because shamanic death and rebirth can frighten the mind. Whilst you will be celebrating after the process happens, when you are going through it, your fears will be stimulated. This is supposed to happen. How else can you lay your fears aside unless you confront them and choose to let them go? Oh my God, you guys. Eight of Swords. Let me read that again. How else can you lay your fears aside unless you confront them and choose to let them go? If, you are, if, they, if they are hiding in the shadows, you cannot deal with them. Your fear might be of success, of your own value, of being alone or being rejected, abandoned, judged, ridiculed, shamed, or ignored. You, or your fear might be that you'll mess up or regret your decisions. It might be that you won't know who you are if you are not your job, relationship, role as a parent or healer, or any other limited identity you have tried to project your entire being into. Life on the other side of that fear might seem unfathomable to your mind. You might worry that you will simply cease to exist. Just to be clear, however, no one who has transitioned from fear-based reality into love-based reality has ever said or will ever say, I miss my fear-based reality. Although it can be painful, what you are giving up will not be a cause for regret. And read this last paragraph. The Oracle of Daring Rebirth comes to you when there is an opportunity to confront a fear and release it, to let go of a belief system or behavior that is getting in the way of the life you actually dream of living. It's your decision whether to challenge that fear now, later, or at all. If you are doubting your readiness and capacity, however, this Oracle suggests that you are more ready than you think you are and that your time is now. Whew. Wow. That's intense. All right, guys. So there it is. I hope you all have a great day. Um, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas Eve. Very Merry Christmas to you all. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Most likely tomorrow morning. We'll see. I'm not sure. But I love you guys. <laughs> and I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. Merry Christmas. Mwah! Bye.